So today we're going to build a lithium titanate battery. I ordered these from China and I've never been able to afford them because they're really expensive, but these things are incredible. So the charge cycle life of these is 20,000 charge cycles. All right. A lead acid is like 500 to a thousand lithium iron phosphate is like 3000 to 5000, but these do 20,000 charge cycles. It's going to be insane. This will last longer than I will be alive on this earth. So I don't have a BMS yet, but we can test the voltage right now. 2.284, 2.284, 2.283, 2, oh, 2.293, 2.27, what? And 2.28. All right. So most of them are pretty darn close. That's not that bad. Actually, they're within 0 0.02. We're fine. All right, guys, I was inspecting the batteries and this one has a dent in it. But I was relieved because all I need out of this for a 12 volt pack is five cells because the BMS I'm using is five cells and I've got five. And so the sixth one I wasn't going to use. And this is the only one that had damage. I don't know if you can see it in the video. Can you see that right there? It's very subtle, but you can feel like it got whacked. And these were packaged really nicely. So I don't know. You never know what happens during shipping. Everything else looks perfect. So for my project, I'm going to use these five batteries and then put this one to the side. And I actually don't know how I'm going to put this battery together. Look at this. These can short circuit real easily. So I have to protect both sides. So I think I'm going to drop this in a box and have them stacked like this. Very carefully, I'm going to wrap this with electrical tape. I know how much my viewers do not like my electrical tape jobs, but I think it will be good at the end. So give, just give me a second. All right. Give me a chance. So now I have three cells and it's positive, negative, positive, and then we have negative, positive on top. So main battery terminal positive over here and main battery terminal negative down here. That was a big pain in the butt, but it does fit. So it's not super fancy, but it does work. Check it out. Finally have the lithium titanate 5S BMS. So this will be able to take our cells and turn it into a safe 12 volt battery system. These terminals are massive. I have a size 19 to tighten these things down. And these are half inch studs. So it requires these huge terminal connectors. Look at this thing. So notice that a lot of these will not fit these large half inch studs. So what I'm doing is cutting these big ones and it check this out. It actually fits on there so yeah just clip it with maybe one of these little tools and you'll have something that you can connect balance leads all right so we have the bms connected and i'm going to check the voltage and it's at 11.43 it looks like a bomb but it's not and now we need to organize these wires somehow there's a lot of wires so we're just going to strap them down with some zip ties like that but that's pretty much it. Now we have a negative and a positive and I can connect it to an inverter or a solar charge controller, whatever I want really. Now we're gonna charge this up and see what happens when we give it an over voltage situation. So the max voltage that this pack will reach is 13 volts. And I also checked the cell voltages and it's balancing the pack correctly. We're doing a capacity test. So we're gonna see how much of this battery we can use with standard 12 volt equipment. So we have a heat gun, we've got a watt meter, and we're gonna see how much we can pull. All right, guys, we're at 175 watt hours and this thing's beeping like crazy. So I'm going to check the voltage. It's 10.5. That's not good. And going by the chart, it looks like a lot of the usable is right around 10 volts. And these inverters like to cut out at 10.5. So that's uh, going to be a problem. After doing some math and thinking about it, I think I would prefer to have a 6S pack. That would charge up to like 15 to 15.5 volts but I would have more usable for 12 volt appliances. And what's a bummer though, is most of the BMSs that they sell online are 5S, but I want a 6S. So I think I'm gonna look online and I have another cell that I bought and I might make this into a 6S and see how well it performs with these kinds of appliances. So this morning it did the low voltage disconnect and it was around 330 watt hours, but these are 40 amp hour or supposedly 40 amp hour cells. And I actually did the math and I'm actually guessing that these are advertised falsely. These are actually 30 amp hour cells. But I've actually read about this happening on some message boards for uh, lithium audio batteries. A lot of guys complained that they'll just repackage these and put a sticker on there for 40 amp hours. 
So yeah, I might try to return these. That's kind of a bummer. I mean, so the battery now has six cells in series and it was a pain in the butt. I also had to wire up my own balance cable so I can connect it to my balancer and also cell voltage monitor. But what was crazy is this thing beeps at 2.5 volts, but these cells have such a low voltage compared to other lithium ion chemistries that I can't balance it and the alarm just keeps beeping like crazy, even though everything's fine. It doesn't have a lithium titanate um, cell monitoring setting on here. Also, finding half inch terminal connectors for these studs was very difficult. I actually lost one of the uh, nuts. And so I have this little clamp right here holding it on. But right now I am charging it with the Victron up to 14.9 volts. And going by the discharge curve, it seems like 2.5 volts is like the start of the curve. So I should be able to get a lot of capacity and still be able to use 12 volt appliances. Now we're going to do a capacity test with these cells. They are fully charged, six cells in series. We have this connected to a 1500 watt 12 volt inverter and we're going to see how long we can pull a big load for. And right now we're pulling 633 watts and we'll see how many kilowatt hours this will produce. And I'm hoping it will hit 0.5 but 0.4 is acceptable because of inverter losses but we will see. So again this is the sweet spot like 12.2 to 12.8 under load with 12 volt with six cells in series it really likes to stay at that throughout the majority of the capacity so we're at 200 watt hours and it's doing really good the voltage is holding i feel a little bit of warmth from the cells now so what we're going for is 552 watt hours so if we see with the efficiency taken into account it will be like a 0.45 watt hours until this is depleted Damn it. So with the inverter losses included, but not the wire loss, we pulled 288 watt hours. And this is partly in due to the fact that we cannot use the entire capacity of these batteries for 12 volt appliances. But I think these are 30 amp hour cells. Um, I've seen other people complain online about that. And after doing my first and now second test, it seems like these are not 40 amp hour, these are 30 amp hour cells, which is a big bummer. So after reading some data sheets, I learned that the discharge efficiency is only 85% on this chemistry. So maybe that's where we're getting our loss from. After messing with these batteries, man, lithium iron phosphate stands ahead. I think I know why everyone's using those ones instead. <laughs> So what should we think about lithium titanate batteries? They are very interesting, they are fun, but I don't think that they are good for 12 or 24 volt solar power system application. If you have a very specific application like a satellite or you have like an off-grid structure with like a wildlife observation where you have like a camera and it has like a satellite communication link and you're never gonna go out there for the next 10 or 20 years and it has to log data or maybe for atmospheric condition thing on top of a mountain, then these are the batteries that you wanna use. But for everyday solar power use, there is no way. The discharge and efficiency is just crazy high. It's practically like a flooded lead acid battery. There's a 15% loss. Lithium iron phosphate is 99% efficient. Okay, like huge difference here. But what's really cool though and so interesting about titanate is they can charge so fast. It's like a 10 C charge rate max and the recommended is 5 C. With lithium iron phosphate, you can do 1 C, but they recommend on most studies to do a 0.5 or 0.4 C. So five to 10 C, like the stats on these are incredible and the life cycle is crazy and the safety is out of this world. But, but for everyday use with an inverter and like typical 12 and 24 volt stuff, I wouldn't use it. But man, you could still build with it. And also because of the charge cycle life, these cost more than most chemistries of lithium ion, but in the long run, they are way cheaper than even lithium ion phosphate. These cells cost for the same capacity, but you're not getting the same capacity because columbic efficiency is not nearly as good. Um, so you have to factor that in as well, but it costs pretty much the same as these, but these last like four to six times 
as long as the lithium iron phosphate. That's just crazy for me to even wrap my mind around. Um, there are capacity studies with lithium iron phosphate, and even that blows me away because these last for so long. Even NMC studies, we have some where the capacity degrading, like on the Teslas, they're doing really good. So I don't think you really need 20,000 charge cycles, but I wanted to build it because it's neat. I really think though that for 12 volt um, appliances, when I did my load test with this, that was a large load when I did it um, six cells in series. And that's probably why my numbers were not as good as when I had the 5S. Because with 5S, I had some little resistor mat things and I had um, a watt meter without the inverters so there was less wire loss because it was less large of a load. So that's why I think I got um, a larger capacity with my first test. But overall, the capacity on these, with all factors considered, is just a joke. But I still think that 6S is the way to go. The usable, like when you have it under load, it stays at like 12.8 to like 12.2 volts. That is perfect for 12 volt system. So if you guys want to build a 12 or 24 volt system, you should use a 6 cell or a 12 cell configuration. The safety is out of this world that you can cut into it. Like you can do whatever you want to these things. And I mean, not anything, but it's just incredible. These will not catch on fire at all. I, there are some crazy videos on YouTube testing these things out. Um, besides that, I hope you guys like this video. I had no idea what to expect. I saw the 20,000 charge cycle on the advertisements. And I was like, oh my God, I got to try this. But yeah, I didn't, I never knew. I should have studied more about the um, discharging inefficiencies. But yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. I'll have my supplier on there, but I'm thinking it's a 30 amp hour. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.